G'day folks. Well, I didn't have much else to do tonight, so I figured it's time for an equipment autopsy. Uh, a friend of mine gave me this thing. Obviously, it's NFG, no friggin' good. Uh, it came out of a water treatment plant. And for those wondering what it is, it is a soft starter. A very big soft starter. The three phase motors, uh, I think it's rated about 30 kilowatts. Uh, the model number, no, volts. 460 volts is rated at 60 horsepower, 55 kilowatts. So fairly substantial. Well, they're 400 volts, 45 kilowatts. Yeah, pretty good stuff. I'm going to open her up and have a look inside. Made by Telemechanique Square D. Obviously, the two companies are combined now. Uh, it's the Ultistart 46 ATS 46D 88N. Uh, I looked this up briefly on Google and uh, apparently it actually has six thyristors inside it. Might be useful. Chunky big fan on the back of it, 240 volt fan. Uh, one heavy little unit. This is stubby for size comparison. It's a big soft starter. The guy said it's probably worth about 20 grand. You know, I offered him two bucks for it and he said forget about it. It's not worth it. So, yeah, let's open this thing up. Yeah. Controls 240 volt single phase, but the uh, main power control and everything is three phase. Multi voltages though. It's serious stuff. Alright, I think I'll just take the fan and everything off, take these standoffs off so that the camera has a chance of focusing on it. I didn't bring my tripod in, so I'm going to mount it on the top of the overhang of the computer desk. Yeah, 230 volt single phase. Plastic rotor. Yeah, bearings are stuffed. I'll bet you it's dead too. This thing probably cook, cooks to death. I love these little swivel spanners. So help, helpful in little things like this, particularly appliances and things. Alright, now these things normally have a little keypad. It's one of the reasons why I didn't bother testing it or anything. There's a plug-in keypad assembly which goes on here, so you can program and change things and see what it's doing. Uh, that and it also detects the loss of all three phases and wouldn't start up anyway, so it's pretty much useless to me. And since they said it was stuffed, well, I believe them. Uh, the keypad is pluggable when it's hot and running. So, it's kind of an interesting feature. You can unplug it after you've programmed it, and you don't have to actually shut the drive down. But without that keypad, it's sort of a paperweight anyway. I don't know what they've programmed it for. Obviously must have been driving a pump or something, it being a water treatment station. Ooh, little fine wires. Those look like Thyrista bricks there. There's only three though, they must be twin packs. Tight little plugs. I don't think that's a plug. Grounding sheet. Aha. What a surface mount component. 
country. There are the bricks made by Semicron. Semi Pack 2 uh, SKKT 1G2 slash 14E is what they are. There's been a lot of moisture getting in there too. There's corrosion on it. There's current transformers in there. There's the power supply transformer for the control. Not a lot in there. strips holding all that in. Yeah. Take them off. Who needs an Allen wrench? but effective. There we go. Ground off. There's control. It's input for the control transformer. Notice only the 230 and the common are open. It's just a multi-voltage step-down transformer. Pull these off the emitter and gate, I think. on it, fan comes on when the thing gets hot. Oh, you can see all that. No, stay terminals too. There we go, that's uh, power output by the looks of it. One, two, three. They're all joined together. I don't know why they have so many terminals. I'm guessing it's just for current loading. You can have two pairs of wires carrying all the current instead of just one. Heavy enough. You can come off. That's another thermal switch. does some great equipment or auto autopsies. Good thing is there's two people always arguing over what they're pulling apart. <laughs> it's great fun sitting down watching a half hour video of two geeks arguing over a laptop. Great fun. Oh there we go. Part of the housing. All interlocking. The whole thing is essentially a heat sink. It's a bit easier. 
And that is the yeah, T1, 2 and 3 are the motor outputs. That's going out to the motor. Inputs are up the top here. Just so you know what what Oop, that one's a bit tighter than I was hoping. I call that the Australian Allen wrench. <laughs> no, those ones are tight. I think I better find a real Allen wrench. Well, that wasn't too hard. Got the rest of them off. They are a uh, Semicron SKKT 132-14E. Put them on there. I'm guessing they're faulty though. Considering they threw this thing out, they wouldn't have thrown it out. It was something simple. Don't have an Allen wrench at that right size either, so that can go aside. Um, there's the current transformers. This thing's definitely been full of water. Not a lot to that. Just CTs and the output terminals. And again, they're all linked. So you've just got one phase, two phase, and three phases. Two strips, two wires, extra current capabilities. Just heavy duty stuff. More wires. Control transformer. I'll have to put some power to that and see what voltages I can get out of it. I'm guessing it's only two I'm guessing it's two thirty volt output. That's about all it's in the electronics box. The main board. Three phase controls. They go to the SCRs. Um Mates power supply, the filter cap there, and some 1000 mic 25 volt caps. There's not a lot to it, but a lot of small componentry jammed into one thing. I'm not 100% sure how soft data like this works, but I guarantee, I'm pretty sure it's to do with the uh, release of current through the thyristors. Well, not thyristors, SCRs. I don't think they're thyristors. But that's about that for that one, there's nothing left. Another pile of bits. Oh, well. hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching. I suppose you're wondering why you're seeing this at the end of the uh, video of dismantling a rather interesting electronic device, but well, the fact of the matter is, I've just been, I don't know, I've been playing World of Warcraft for a little while now. I've got one level 80 and a level 75, and quite frankly, frankly it bores the shit out of me once you get up to high level. I mean, it's sort of interesting when they do things like Brewfest today, but funny thing is there are a lot of kids out there who sit here in front of the computer day in, day out playing it. Like the old lady in the pokies venue, you always see this one old woman or man sitting in front of a pokey machine every time you go to the pub. And yeah, some people just need to get better hobbies. Admittedly, I've been a game geek for years. I've played Duke Nukem Quake. Wolfenstein 3Ds, the original ones. I grew up in front of a computer. But the thing is, I know when to call it quits. I mean, I only log on to WoW for maybe half an hour a week at the most. Uh, play the new content a bit, yeah. I've got level 80 Death Knight here and level 75 Warlock elsewhere on account. But that's about it. I don't get how people can make multiple accounts full of top level characters. And what else are they doing with their time? Is this the only thing they do? It's fascinating the first time you play it, but... Nah. I can't wait for Cataclysm to come out, though. That would be interesting. I'm downloading the patch, which is supposed to be most of it. About four gigabytes worth. But, we'll see how that goes. And for now, I'm sure if you've been watching this uh, disassembly video and gotten to this point, stick to what you're doing now. Keep pulling things apart. I only play video games for a limited amount of time because we need people who know how to use their hands for other things than punching keys. 